Welcome to the Management System database. In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to create charts in our database. For this, let's go to the invoices table. And here, we're going to create different charts for our use case. Our first chart will be related with the invoice items that we have for each invoice. For this, we have added some information in our product and also the type of product that is being considered. To add a chart, we need to go to admin mode. And in the edit field section, we can add a chart directly from here and drag it to the place that we want. Or we can go to the layout elements and create a chart directly from here. In this case, let's create one chart and bring it up in our form. Our first chart will be to indicate the amount of products and separate them by category. So let's click in the wrench in the middle. And here we can define the data set that is going to be plotted in our chart. So in the formula section, let's click on it and select the subtable that we want. And save. Now we already have created a standard view of the chart. In this case, we want to create a pie chart to display what are the categories that our client is purchasing. So for this, we'll go to edit columns. And here we can select the product and the type, which is going to be grouped and the quantity, which is going to be sum. We're going to have our X and Y information. So the types are going to be grouped into the categories and the quantities are going to show up. Now we change it to data series column. And here we can see the products that are being purchased by this client. Here we can also see the categories that are being displayed. We can click on them and hide them in order to display only the information that we want to see. And if we check our subtable, we see that the information is correct. So we have seven fruits being added here, three items for dairy, and five items for bakery. If we go back to our chart, we can also remove this information or leave it here if you want. In this case, we'll just leave it here. The stacked and smoothed line will make sense now that we work with the bar charts and the line charts. Let's now create another chart. And again, let's bring it up. In our first example, we created a chart with the information that is already inserted into our subtable. But we can also define the data set from another table or from the table here itself. In this case, let's see on a line chart how the sales are being done throughout the time. Let's click on the range in the middle and we want now to select the invoices. Okay. Now, in our columns, let's insert a formula that will give us the month and year of our invoices. So, we want the year and the month. Note that it is better to put the year before the month so it gets ordered properly. For the formula, we'll put the function format, invoice date, and then here, how we wish to display it. Year, month, say. And this will be our group. Okay. Now we want to add also the sum or the total of our invoices. So let's add here the sum for our total amount. And let's assign a line chart for that. Let's change the data series to columns. 
So our x-axis is going to be our year and month, while the y-axis will be our total. Now we can see how the sales are going throughout the time. We can also smooth the lines of our line chart and this will change our layout but still keeping the same information. Since we select exactly the same table that we currently are at, so we are now in the invoices table, we can create exactly the same chart by creating a new view with the chart. So here we can create exactly the same view that we just created before. So if we go to edit columns and let's remove this information here. And let's insert exactly the same information that we put in our previous chart. So here we have the format with the invoice date, year and month. <laughs> and the sum of our invoice items all summed together. So if we now change our line chart, we see that it's exactly the same chart that we created before. Again, we can smooth the lines here and with this specific view, we can also save this image and download it in, in our device. Okay, if we go back now, let's create another example where we want to see, according to the years, what are the types of products that are being purchased more often. For that, let's create another chart. And here we want to put the invoice items that we have. So our invoice items table is this one here. So we want to treat this data in order to see throughout the time which are the items that are being purchased more often. Let's go back to our table. And here we can put select invoice items. And in the Edit Column section, we'll first put the invoice date, which is now a link to the invoice. And of course, let's format it in the way that we want. And group it again. So for our new formulas, we want to see the quantity. If we just leave it like this, we will get a total amount of data. Let's change the, the data series. And here we can see the total amount of data that we have per month. But if we want to divide it into products, or in this case into types, we need to create other sections here. So let's put here, if the product type is equal one, then we'll show the quantity. And what is type equal one? Type equal one represents the type that we have here in this choice field, where one is the bakery. Right, so these items here are all represented by a choice ID. So if we go back to our chart, we can see that the first one is linked with the bakery. Now let's create the other ones for the other types. Let's copy this and insert the other functions.
you see that it starts adding also the other types. So let's go back here and add the other types as well. Okay, now that we have added our other three types, let's go back and we can assign it to be stacked or not. If we leave it without being stacked, we see that the types are being added one on the side of the other. Instead, if we put it as stacked, we'll see that the types will be added on top, stacked with each other. And this is good to give us the total amount. So in this case, there were 15 items in which seven of them were fruits. So this helps us to give a better analytical perspective of our data. Note that in these three examples, this one is actually related with this record. So if we go down to other records, it is going to change how the chart looks. While the other ones are not going to be changed because they make a reference directly to this table. We didn't put a filter or anything that will be changing that. This other charts, the ones that are using the select statement, they are very useful, especially when you have a dashboard, when you want to display the data from your table in one place. In the Linux doc documentation, there is some more information about the charts. Normally, the most used in the business are bar charts, line, and pie charts. But there are also other types like donut, polar, radar, and bubble. You can choose them directly here. Normally, all the charts will require an x-axis and a y-axis, except the bubble chart that also required a third numeric value, which will be related with the radius. OK, in this tutorial, we talked about how to create charts in our form by using the data that is already inserted into our subtables, but also how to create charts that are related with the table itself. And that will be very useful when creating analytical displays, especially on a dashboard. Also, we saw how to create a chart directly in the table and print it as an image. Ninox.